Welcome back. We're in conversation with Bharat Puri and Piyush Pandey. Gentlemen, it's been a delight. It's been an honor speaking to you about this occasion, which itself is uh, an occasion to remember for everyone. Let's let's go rapid fire because that's the season. Unfortunately, I don't have a hamper to give either of you all, but I'm sure that you all will be rapid and have a fair amount of fire as well. Uh, I'll start with you, Mr. Puri. Your favorite Indian holiday destination? My favorite Indian holiday destination, little beyond Simla, Mashobra and beyond. Rajasthan. <laughs> Had to be Rajasthan. <laughs> favorite Indian musician? Favorite Indian, Kishore Kumar by a long distance. Kishore Kumar uh, or maybe Bhim um, Joshi. I'm sure, uh, I'm surprised you didn't go with Ila Arun. And now you would have then had something to write in social media about my nepotism. <laughs> <laughs> well played there, well played. Uh, the favourite Indian brand which is not yours? Favourite Indian brand that is not mine? It's a very difficult one. The first ones that come are mine but I would... Titan probably. Titan? Yours? Now you can accuse me again but yes. <laughs> You'll go again with Titan. But it, it doesn't have to be yours. No. It's something that you would have worked on. If you on. definitely don't want mine, then it's Haldiram. Okay. <laughs> wow, that's a great brand. Favorite Indian? Could be someone from history, could be someone from the present, could be uh, you know, someone you've worked with, etc. Favorite Indian? I, I just think Mahatma Gandhi is somebody you start with and you, I don't think anybody has still overtaken him. Sardar Patel. Sardar Patel. Um, your favorite Indian food? I mean, this I'm sure is going to be a longer answer than. See, this is a very difficult question. Your favorite <laughs> Indian food? It depends on the Looking time of sizes. Correct. <laughs> and it depends on the time of the day. It depends on like you know. But if you ask me, for one single favorite Indian food, I would say a wonderful alu paratha. Kuteta ki kachori from Jaipur. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm digressing here because since we speak about food, India's food actually, you know, signifies the kind of diversity that we have, etc. Wonderful thing is India, you know, it doesn't matter whether you're in Madurai and you're in Sriram mess, whether you're having these lovely Ravat ka kachoris in Jaipur or whether you're having like, you know, uh, Lucknow's royal chart, it doesn't matter. Each of the places, you know, these are the places to be ticked off and everybody will keep them ready. And the thing is, my trade in two of the three companies has been a dealer-led trade. Dealers anyway in large parts of the country believe if they don't feed you, they're not, you know, hospitable enough. <laughs> this was taught to me by an old boss after I said, listen, by the time I reach the fifth or sixth shop, I'm dying. He said, now I'll tell you the trick. The moment the guy says, Ab kya lenge? ask for a pan and start chewing the pan and then say, now I can't have anything else. <laughs> so these are the tricks you learn along the way. Most beautiful experience, I was shooting, shooting with Mr. Bachchan. Right. With the tribals in Gujarat, in Sat, uh, Saputara, hmm. close to Nasik. And there was a shot of Mr. Bachchan having a piece of, uh, or a bite of the meal that the tribal lady was making. Hmm. And uh, the shooting guy, Shujit Sarkar, and he had got sandwiches and us for, all for Mr. Bachchan and me uh, for the lunch. And Mr. Bachchan, after the first shot, he said, Piyush, come here. So I went there. I said, oh, sandwich, don't eat sandwich. There was a red roti of some wheat, not bajra, but very bajra type of some wheat. It looked very reddish and a bamboo ka achar. Bamboo. We ate that stuff. I've never had food like this. So you will discover India in the smallest of places and each time it's magic. I have a problem when I go out of the country. Yeah. <laughs> I don't have a problem in the country. And I know what you don't like. You don't like sabzis which are called jalfrezi. I hate them because I, I went to, uh, when I go to the restaurant and they say, we'll give you veg korma, uh, vegetable jalfrezi, mixed vegetables. I want to have a sabzi with the name. <laughs> I must tell you, with this fellow, whenever you're traveling with him, and we were together at the London Olympics, <laughs> he comes to me and says, partner, and you know, they had this whole hospitality program, we're going to this restaurant for this. He says, partner, bunk karenge ka? Just in this little lane here, I found this Nepali fellow who's make, got a good Indian restaurant, we'll go there. <laughs> <laughs> well, food in India. Uh, three things that you think India can teach the world? I think India can teach unity, unity and diversity first and foremost. I think India can definitely teach the world how to keep moving ahead despite having, you know, 
all of its issues, so on and so forth, keep, you know, like the elephant, keep marching ahead. And I think India can really teach the world humility. I mean, uh, you know, the national animal of India, according to me, should be the elephant for uh, all the things that you've spoken about. Uh, six blind men couldn't figure out what uh, the yes. elephant in totality is, keeps moving on, and it does have a fair amount of humility, I must say that. Uh, that's a tough act to follow, three things. No, it doesn't have to have be different three things. Yes. Facing uh, all adverse things and living with it. That's what, you, you're a Rajasthani, you know, that when in 47 degrees they are making the roads, they are still singing songs. So, the toughness, the, the resilience, resilience is the word I would add. One thing from the past which is not present in India right now, and one thing from the present which you would like India to always keep in its future. One thing from the past that is not present now is the ability to spend time. I still remember when Piyush and me, when we were younger and we were the creative fellow, you know, he was the creative fellow and I was the client. We would have a meeting where the first one hour had nothing to do with the product and the brand and so on and so forth. But that's what actually forged a kind of relationship which allowed so many things to happen. So I would just say the timelessness of the past, I think in, a, in our day-to-day -day lives, we forget that there's time to press the pause button, take a deep breath, smell the coffee, smell the roses and then move on. I think that's the one thing from the and past. If I was to take a different aspect of the same thing, I agree with him. It's informality. Hmm. We could walk into our neighbor's house without announcing and, and enter and sit there. We could, and, and informality and res, uh, responsibility, which is, you have, again, all of us have seen it, when there was a bereavement in the family, yes. how the neighbors came into the food. That is in our culture. So I think we should not lose our culture ever the culture has so many beautiful things in it. And what we should take into the future is the culture also. And that brings me to my final question. We are India at 75, India at 100. How do you imagine it to be? Three words. Prosperous, unified, and definitely a place where others look up to and say, I wish we were like them. Century celebrate and then tell yourself take a fresh card and say i'm betting on zero i'll score another one wonderful thank you so much gentlemen india couldn't be prouder to have these two as her sons thank you thank you so much